In order for us to understand load sharing in bolted connections, we now have to take the step of finding the equivalent spring constant for the bolt and for the clamped members that make up the bolted connection. So the first thing that we are going to do is calculate an equivalent stiffness for the bolt. And we're going to call that K sub B. And we understand that we're going to be modeling the bolt as two springs in series. There will be a spring associated with the nominal bolt diameter, and there's going to be a spring that is associated with the threaded portion of the bolt. So we have to find those spring constants, and we have to then combine them to find the equivalent spring constant. Now, from the last lecture, we know that the equivalent spring constant is going to be equal to one over the spring constant of the nominal bolt diameter plus one over the spring constant associated with the threaded section of the bolt. When we clamp two plates, I'm going to label the first plate one and this lower plate two. When we clamp those together, we tighten the nut on the bolt and it advances up the threads. That puts the bolt into tension and it compresses all of the components that are between the head of the bolt and the head of the nut. The way that load is distributed in the compressed plates follows what's called frustum, which has this conical cross-sectional shape. And we need to figure out all of the equivalent spring constants associated with that frustum in the clamped members and, of course, the spring constants of the bolt. The first thing that we do is we identify the grip length, this is this lowercase l, as the thickness of all the compressed components. That would include the top washer, the top plate, the bottom plate, and the lower washer if it happened to have washers. We're going to focus on the bolt instead, and so we're going to look at this equivalent spring constant, and we recognize that the bolt length within the grip goes from here down to here. So there's the bolt length in the grip, and we are going to have a spring constant for this unthreaded portion, and we're going to have a spring that represents the threaded portion of the bolt. That's the way we're going to work this problem out. So the bolt stiffness is going to be equal to 1 over the spring constant of the nominal diameter, I call that, and the threaded portion of the bolt, we'll call that K sub T. Now we already know from the last time that the nominal bolt stiffness would be the cross-sectional area of that nominal diameter times the elastic modulus divided by the length of the bolt that is unthreaded. And the threaded portion would have an equivalent spring constant given by the cross-sectional area A sub T times the elastic modulus divided by the length of the threaded portion that is inside the grip. If we combine these together, then 1 over KB is going to be equal to LD over EAD plus LT over EAT, and that we can certainly say is 1 over E times the quantity AT. LD plus ADLT divided by ATAD. And so the bolt spring constant KB, I just invert all of that, end up with E times the cross sectional area of the threaded portion times the cross sectional area of the nominal bolt diameter divided by ATLD plus ADLT. That is the formula that we would use to find the equivalent spring constant for the bolt. In order for us to do that, we need the length of the unthreaded portion of the bolt in the grip, the length of the threaded portion of the bolt in the grip, the nominal cross-sectional area A sub D, the threaded cross-sectional area, and the elastic modulus of the bolt. Now, in order for us to do that, we are going to use these standard threaded lengths for bolts. And we have equations that tell us what the standard threaded lengths are. In the English series of units, if the bolts are less than six inches long, the threaded length of the bolt will be twice the diameter plus a quarter inch. If the bolt is greater than six inches, it's twice the diameter plus a half. And in the metric series, we have these equations that are shown right here. So it's probably a good idea soon to do an example. But before we do that, the area of the unthreaded portion of the bolt is just equal to 
the pi times the diameter squared, that's the nominal diameter of the bolt divided by four. We find the threaded area from tables, and in a Shigley book, we have tables eight one and eight two that correspond to the metric and English series bolts, and the fastener stiffness of the bolt is given by the equation that we just derived a moment ago. Now, table eight one shows diameters and areas for metric threads, and it is divided into two series, the coarse pitch series over here, and then the fine pitch series here. And so we have the nominal diameters, we have the pitch, we have the threaded cross-sectional area for both the fine pitch series and the coarse pitch series. Likewise, when we go to the English system of units, we have table 8-2, where we have the major diameters, the number of threads per inch, the tensile stress area for both the coarse and fine series. They are divided right along here in that table. Now let's just go ahead and do an example. This will be an example in English units where somebody has decided to clamp two plates together that has a gasket fitting, which is shown here. They are both made of the same material and each are three quarter inches thick. We pass a 5 ace 11 UNC two and a quarter grade five bolt through them. We don't include any washers and we tighten that together. So we would have a grip that would go like this and because the two plates are of the same thickness, the center of the grip is actually at the interface between the two plates. That's not always the case. But we now want to find an equivalent bolt stiffness, K sub B. So for us to do that, we need to know the length of the unthreaded portion of the bolt in the grip. We need to know the length of the threaded portion of the bolt in the grip. We need to know the nominal cross-sectional area. We need to know the threaded cross-sectional area. And before we can learn and, and calculate the threaded length of the bolt in the grip, we need to know what the grip length is. So the grip length, you may recall, is the thickness of all the components that are loaded in compression. So in this case, the grip length would just be 0.75 inches, that's the thickness of the top plate, plus 0.75 inches, that's the thickness of the bottom plate, for a total of 1.5 inches. Okay, we know that the bolt is of a nominal diameter 5 ace, that's given right here. So the nominal diameter diameter is 5 eighths of an inch. We know that there are 11 threads per inch. It's a coarse threaded bolt and the total length of the bolt from the top to the bottom is going to be two and a quarter inches. So the bolt length L, capital L, is 2.25 inches. And so the threaded length of that bolt, according to the standards, since this bolt is less than six inches long, it's going to be twice the diameter plus a quarter inch. So LT, LT is just going to be twice the diameter, which we said was five ace plus 0.25 inches. And if we do that calculation is 1.50 inches. We know that the overall length of that bolt is two and a quarter inches. We just calculated that the threaded length of that bolt, LT, is 1.5 inches. We know that the grip length, L, is 1.5 inches. So now what we need to do is figure out what the unthreaded length of the bolt is. So the unthreaded length of the bolt, that'd be L sub D, it would be equal to the total length of the bolt minus the threaded length. So the total length is 2.25 inches minus the threaded length of 1.50 inches. And so the unthreaded length is simply going to be equal to 0.75 inches. The threaded length in the grip is going to be the grip length minus the unthreaded length in the grip. Well, the grip length we already said was 1.50. We're going to subtract 0.75 from that. So LT is 0.75 inches. So if we go back to the drawing, we say, all right, this uh, unthreaded length is 0.75 and the threaded length is 0.75. We can then use our equation and calculate KB, but before we do that, we need to know AD and we need also to know AT. Well, AD is pretty straightforward. We just calculate the cross-sectional area it's gonna be pi d squared over four. And the d, you recall, is five eighths of an inch. 
which is 0 0.625 inches. Area of the unthreaded portion of the bolt is 0 0.3 zero six eight square inches how do we get the threaded cross-sectional area to find the threaded cross-sectional area we need to go to figure eight two in the shigley book and we look up the five eighths inch diameter unc series so it's going to be right in here five eighths unc says that my nominal diameter is 0 0.625 inches. I have 11 threads per inch. My tensile stress area is 0 0.226 square inches. So AT is 0 0.226 inches square. That means that our bolt equivalent stiffness, you'll recall, is the elastic modulus times AT times AD divided by LT times AD plus LD times AT. The elastic modulus of a steel bolt is 30 MPSI, which is 30 times 10 to the 6 pounds per square inch. We already know what our AT is. It's 0.226 inches square. So KB is going to be 30 times 10 to the 6 pounds per square inch. I'm going to multiply that by AT, 0 0.226 inches squared. I'm going to multiply that by AD, which is 0 0.3068 inches squared. I'm going to divide that by LT, which I already calculated was 0.75 inches. I'm going to multiply that by AD, 0 0.3068 Eight square inches. And I'm going to add to that LD, well, that's 0 0.75 inches again, times the cross-sectional area AT, 0 0.226 inches squared. That gives me, if you look carefully at all of these units, this is inch, this is inch, so in the bottom, I have inches cubed. On the top side, I have pound inches squared. So I end up with a bolt stiffness, KB, which is in units of pounds per inch. It's going to give me a bolt stiffness of 5.21 times 10 to the 6 pounds per inch. And that's how you find the equivalent spring constant for a bolt. So what you need to do when you're trying to solve these problems is first find the grip length, L. Then what we need to do is find the second. Look at your total bolt length and find the threaded bolt length from standard equations. Once you have the threaded bolt length, you can find the unthreaded bolt length. Once you have the unthreaded bolt length, you can find the threaded length of the bolt in the grip by taking the grip length and subtracting the unthreaded length in the grip. You will calculate AD as pi d squared over 4. You will look up AT. You will look up the elastic modulus and you plug all of that stuff then into the equation for the bolt stiffness.